Hey, Intermediate Algebra. Hey, on this one, Futures of Quadratic Functions, I'm going to try and get through this as quickly as possible, but it might go a little long here, so I apologize in advance for that. So, they're going to give you quadratics in three different forms. They're either going to give it to you in graphing or vertex form, they're going to give it to you in factored form, or they're going to give it to you in standard form. And in each form, you need to come up with the x-intercepts, the smaller and the larger one, and you need to be able to find the vertex. Okay, so quickly on this one, because it's in vertex form, we can find the vertex very quickly. Remember, it's the opposite of this and this number. So the opposite of negative 3 is positive 3, and then we have 25. So vertex form gives us that very quickly. Now, to come up with our larger and smaller values for x, it's pretty simple. So we are just simply going to solve this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to subtract 25 from both sides, get it away from this part of it right here. So you can see I'm going to write that right here. I subtracted 25 from both sides, so I have negative, parenthesis x minus 3, parenthesis squared equals negative 25. Then I'm going to multiply both sides because I don't want this negative in front. So I'm going to multiply this side by a negative, and I'm going to multiply this side by a negative. And as I do that, I get x minus 3 quantity squared equals positive 25. Now, because I'm in this form, how do I get rid of this squared sign? I need to take the square root of this side, but whenever I take square root of this side, I need to do the same for this side. So on this side, the square and the square roots will cancel, so I've just simply got x minus 3. And by now, you should know that the square root of 25 is both the positive and the negative value of 5. Now, final step. How do you cancel out negative 3? You add 3. When I add 3 to positive 5, 3 plus 5 is 8 for here. And when I add 3 to negative 5, I get negative 2. So my smaller value is negative 2. My larger value is 8. All right. Let's do the next one. Okay. So we're on to the next one right here. This one you'll see is in standard form. This is the hardest form because it does not give you the vertex and it does not give you the intercepts. And there's two ways of solving this. I'm going to encourage you to do it my first way, but I will show the second just to be there. The first thing I would do with this is I'm going to factor it. What are two numbers that multiply to make 60 but add up to make 19? Hopefully you came up with, well, that would be 15 and 4. 15 times 4 is 60, but 15 plus 4 is 19. Then I'm going to do my zero property product, where I set them both equal to 0, and I solve, and t will end up equaling negative 4 for this one, and t will equal negative 15 for this one. I now, very quickly, found my smaller value of negative 15 and my larger value of negative 4. Now, there's two ways to get the vertex, okay? The easy way, in my opinion, is simply... What is the midway point between negative 15 and 4? And if it's kind of hard to think about that, just do this. Add them together, divide by 2. Negative 15 plus negative 4 is negative 19. Half of negative 19 is negative 9.5. So I'm simply going to take negative 9.5. I'm going to plug it in for t here. I'm going to plug it in for t here because that's the x-coordinate of my vertex. And then I'm going to add these together add these together and multiply, and when I do that, I get negative 30.25. So, I know that my x-coordinate of the vertex is negative 9.5. Again, that's the midpoint of these two. And when I plug that in for t up here and I solve, then I get my vertex, the, the y-coordinate of the vertex, which is 30 point, or negative 30.25. Now, I said I would show you the other way quickly. The other way you could quickly get this ver these two vertex numbers is you should know by now that you can isolate these two, and you can take half of this number right here. So half of 19t would be 9.5t. So we could quickly set this up into t plus 9.5. We put the parentheses around it, and we square that. Okay. Now, when we do that, 9.5 squared comes out to be, oh, it's like negative, or it came out to be like 90, what was it, 90.25. Well, if I'm adding 90.25, then I also, to keep it fair, have to subtract 90.25. And when I subtract 90.25 from 60, which was already there, I end up with negative 30.25. Again, this is now in vertex form, so it's the opposite of this, or negative 9.5, and this number are your vertex. Either one works, but I would recommend you go with this one, and you'll see why in the next problem I give you now. All right, next one. This one is already in factored form, which was like this one. Oopsie, sorry about that. 
which was just like this one right up here is in factored form, and then you work it through. So from this factored form on this one, I know I can apply zero property product to get negative 3, zero property product to get negative 10, and those happen to be my two uh, x-intercepts. By the way, if you look at this, I put those in incorrectly. It should have been negative 10 for the smaller and negative 3 for the larger. So I apologize. Um, if you ever get this problem, make sure you put them in the correct order. Now, from here, negative 3 plus negative 10 is negative 13. Half of negative 13 is negative 6.5. So I'm going to simply plug in negative 6.5 for both of my x values right here. And then I'm going to add these two together. I'm going to add these two together. When I do that, I simply get a negative 3.5 for this side. I get a positive 3.5 for this side. I'm going to multiply it. A negative times a negative is a positive. Positive 3.5 times positive 3.5 turns out to be 12.25. So this right here is my x-coordinate for my vertex, and this right here is my y-coordinate for my vertex. So I plug those in right there. Hey, that's how you do it, guys. Sorry this one took a little over six minutes, but hopefully you understand it now. Have a great day. We'll see you on Google Hangouts. Bye-bye.